So today we're going to learn who JSB is. All right, so quick review, right? Brick walls are our challenges because the things that we're facing and we're trying to learn from. And then we've got our head fakes, which is kind of when you learn something that you were not originally expecting to learn um, throughout your life. Okay. So I'll give you guys a quick second, just read that disclaimer. Are we ready to move on? We're good? We're good? Great. Okay. All right. So before basketball, um, so this is actually a picture of me, I think, sixth or seventh grade. I broke my arm. Yeah, we can call that a brick wall, but that's not the main brick wall I want to talk about today. So this is me and my dad. We're playing the drums at a, um, at a band store. And the big thing is my dad had a real talent for the drums. I don't know why, but every time in my head I would like consider him Le LeBron James of drumming in the sense that I felt like he really worked hard. Um, he built up his drum skills at a young age, kind of like when he was my age. And I kind of had that talent, kind of like LeBron and his son. I, I have like the rhythm and the beat, and I, I knew how to do all that. I, could, I would go to drum lessons, and I would just, I wouldn't even have to like study, and it would get better every single week. You know, I would just show up and ace the, the homework. So all of a sudden one day, COVID kind of comes by, and I'm like, you know what, I'm really bored. And so I have a basketball hoop in my house, and I'm like, well, would I rather shoot some hoops or just sit here and do the same stupid, like, you know, right, left, right, left, and all that boring stuff. So I start doing basketball uh, throughout COVID. And at one point I tell my dad, I'm like, listen, high school's coming up. I had a few bad teachers in ninth grade for, for band. And I was just like, you know what? I don't really want to do band anymore. Um, so both parents today are still kind of upset about that. But I said, listen, if I'm just going to go all in on one thing. I want it to be basketball. So here's our practice plan. Uh, today we're going to cover the three big brick walls that I faced throughout my high school career. The first one's the clock. We're going to get to that. Here we go. So it's 10th grade. I'm on the JV basketball team. And like it says, it's not going well. I'm sitting on the bench pretty much every game. My parents are driving out to CBE, CB West, all, the, all those different schools. And it's kind of frustrating because it's like they drive just to watch me sit and like, listen, you know, I, I'm all for the whole bench thing. But when you really are passionate about a sport and you're just sitting there, it's really tough. Um, game after game after game, especially when you thought in the preseason, I'm going to get some minutes, I'm going to play. So I'm just sitting on the bench, and then the season finally ends, and I'm just like, you know what, I have to really work hard this season because I don't, I don't want this again. I'm not, I don't want to sit on the bench anymore. So that's when we get to the off season. I like to call it the summer of separation. Some people may know. Uh, so like I said, the season ends. Putting my head down, I'm going to work. It's time to earn a varsity spot. So let's do this. And this is my Michael Jordan moment. 11th grade arrives, and now I'm cut from the team. So not even like a thing, right? We went from sitting on the bench, at least I'm on the team, to I'm not even on it anymore. So what do I do? Do I, I quit basketball? This is 11th grade. Do I quit basketball? I mean, I'm more of a student than an athlete. I've got a great GPA, but if I want to go to college to play basketball, you can't say that you were not on a basketball team, right? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. So right around this time was when I started to realize that you have to have mentors in your life. So right here is my coach, uh, Randolph Jackson. We start, I started working with him in 10th grade and played on his AAU basketball team. And he told me what it really means to work hard. I remember my first lesson with him, I was sitting there doing a move, and I was just thinking to myself, like, man, this is like real hard work. And so now, because of training with him, I realized what real hard work looks like. Um, over here this is my guy, Danny Cooper. He was a D3 basketball player at Moravian, and now he's training um, NBA players like Mac McClung, who just won the dunk contest recently. And so he's kind of taught me. I was scrolling through YouTube one day, and I saw one of his videos. It was like, Day in the Life of a College Athlete. And I click on it and watch it, and I'm like, you know what? I'm sitting here. I'm playing the same sport. And I was like, what if I could do the same thing? Using his phone and filming his face and putting on it on YouTube, why can't I do the same thing? So I created Josh Myler Basketball. For those of you wondering, I underlined it for you. That's where I got our J, S, and the B. Right? So all I did, went outside one day, literally, you can see here my first minute video was like 49 seconds long. I thought I, thought I was going to get Mr. Beast type views. I'm like, I'm going viral, right? I can be a YouTuber for the rest of my life. And my first video is kind of terrible. I was like, what the heck? This is not what I thought it was going to be like. This is kind of where I learned about lesson one. So regardless of whether it's basketball or YouTube, I used to live by this quote. Uh, Kevin Durant said, hard work beats talent. The talent fails to work hard. So now moving forward, I know that when I get to the college level, um, Whenever I'm brand new at something or I want to beat some, somebody at something, I just know it's going to take hard work. 
you know, I'm not super talented at basketball. I was at the drums, but I'm not super talented at basketball. But I know if there's something else I want to accomplish, it's just going to take hard work. And also the big thing too, um, I put this in, hard work's never really wasted. I think we always think that just because we really work hard towards something, that it's all wasted, right? Like, I, oh, Josh, you put all that effort into making the team and you got cut. But think about it. I learned, right, how to work hard, how to have responsibility, how to hold myself accountable, how to be self-aware of my weaknesses. So hard work's never really wasted, even though that's kind of the way that we're taught and we frame it to be. So I kept posting and posting and working hard. And then so here are some of the results. I've had uh, pretty recently some YouTube videos do semi-well. Uh, for example, this is probably my best performing video, I think 13,000 views. Just for reference, the Wells Fargo Center holds about 20 or 22,000 people. So, I mean, I, listen, I can't even fathom giving a talk or literally a five-minute video in front of 20,000 people almost. But, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, so, I'm really proud of that because once you put your head down and if you really have a passion for something, you can kind of achieve some results. So, last summer, I had the awesome opportunity to go to PFEW Business Camp, which was around three hours away in Lycoming College. Um, I saw the camp because I was taking sports management class um, yeah, in, in 11th grade, and I was like, you know what, this camp looks kind of interesting, and I went to the whole presentation about it. I'm like, I really want to go. So I get there. It's around 300 kids all around from PA, and they split, the, split you into groups of 20, and then out of that group of 20, there's a finance team and a marketing team and then a CEO. So I'm going to dinner with one of my friends the first night, and he goes like, hey, Josh, are you going to be a CEO tomorrow? Like, are you going to try to go for it? Because you were kind of talking today in the, in the circle. And I'm like, I don't know. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, like, listen, I don't know any of these kids here, right? I mean, what the heck? I might as well just put for it. So then it comes down. We do, like, a group vote out of the group of 20. comes down between me and this one other person. So, like, our company advisor who works at a company told us, go out in the hallway. you got a minute to figure out exactly what you're going to tell the group about why I should be the CEO. So I got into the hallway and I'm thinking like, shoot, I have a minute. What am I even supposed to say? So I remember being so stressed about it. And I'm like, you know what? What if I take my basketball approach and tell the rest of the kids that if I'm their CEO, I'm going to make sure that they're all heard, right? That no one rides the bench as a member of my team. So I come back in. I tell the same thing to that group. And then the other CEO contestant comes up and just goes, well, I want to be CEO because I don't see myself going in any other role. And I think, and I was just like, okay. So, so right, because they were kind of focused on themselves. So then finally I went first, the other girl went second. So then they finally end it and she's like, Josh, would you like to respond to that? I said, no need, because I already knew the CEO spot was mine. And then, um, so finally then they said, we're gonna count the votes. I ended up being CEO. And that moment taught me a lot about putting myself out there. And I thought it was great to have that sort of experience. Um, I loved what I was doing. And this taught me that, yes, I really also have a passion for business now. So I've got a passion for basketball. And at the time, I was just thinking, like, maybe there's some sort of basketball degree in school where you don't have to play on a team and work, wiggle your way around that. But now I knew. It was like, well, I want to do something business-related. This is my lesson number two. Um, I put a traffic light here. Listen, there's never going to be a green light to do what we want to do in life. We're never going to get the go to start that project, to start that essay, to do that homework. Uh, but I think, you know, not waiting for that green light and just doing it on your own terms is the best way to accomplish what you want to accomplish. I put this quote up here from Alex Formosi you can read. Uh, he's an investor and an entrepreneur. I love a lot of his stuff. And also, you're going to get laughed at, right? I still get laughed at for early JSB videos. You know, ton, tons of people laugh. People, I get great comments, bad comments. But the idea is, like, if the price I have to pay to impact who I want to impact is a price of laughter, then that's something I'm willing to pay. If I know that I'm doing the right thing, I'm willing to accept the people that make the jokes and the laughs and, you know, who don't really understand. Filming starts to become great, right? As my skills increase, I'm getting more opportunities. This is actually me. I was at Pickup USA, a gym over in Warminster last summer. I coached my team to the championship. First time as a coach, for um, like a serious coach, and we went all the way to the championship. Listen, a lot of people overcomplicate it. I just told my players, like, I want, you know, pass the ball, get some good shots, and play as a team. Meanwhile, the other coach is, like, throwing up Iverson cuts and a bunch of other plays. So I was like, I, I kept it simple with my players. And I looked at it from this perspective when I was first a coach. I was like, what do I do, right? Because all the parents are going to look at me and be like, this guy is not a D3 athlete. He's not going, you know, he's not playing college basketball. How do I do it? But I was like, here, I'm going to reframe that mindset to I'm somebody who's made a lot of mistakes and knows what not to do when it comes to training or the mistakes I wasted so much time um, spending outside and learning. So I felt like I'm applying the perspective of, you know, trying to help the players realize what I didn't realize and helping them that way. So lesson number three, reminders for success. 
So obviously you're going to have to step out of your comfort zone, right? I tell my kids all the time, if we're just doing, you know, a single layup and we can't, you know, we can already make that layup. What's, where's the challenge? How are we actually improving? Second thing, you're going to have to fail, right? Because if none of us failed, we would all just succeed, right? So some of, we have to fail in order to learn what we're doing wrong and then adjust our strategy. And second, this is a big one. Success is different for everybody, right? For some of us, it's playing professionally. For some of us, it's making an impact in our community. It's going to differ for every person, but success looks different in all shapes and, for, shapes and forms. So now we're in the fourth quarter, um, and it's all about focus. So contrary to popular belief, being a YouTuber, influencer, whatever you want to title it, is not easy. I mean, this is, the, this is actually like a very small checklist of some of the things you have to do just to be able to post you know, one or two YouTube videos during a month. So yeah, it's not easy. It requires a lot of balance with school. Um, but I definitely like this. It's a challenging way to inspire um, other athletes. And like I said, all this, it, it gets overlooked. People just think, oh, you just pick up your phone, right? And you just press record and that's it. But it does require a lot more than people think. And through doing all that, I've gotten some nice comments. People have said, your videos suck. They've said, dude has never won anything. And I promise you, this one is serious. People have said, pressure wash your parents home. Like literally, they, I mean, I've, I've gotten that before. Um, I'm doing that this summer, if you guys are curious. Um, anyways. <laughs> so yeah, because um, I had a video and you know it was like a short or something and they saw it and they were just like pressure wash your parents home and I wrote back like, thanks. So um, you know, you get, some, you get some mean comments, but you also get some nice ones. So here's a quick gl glimpse at some of like my best comments. I don't even, some of them are like so long I couldn't make it big enough to see. What's next? JSB is going to be heading to a Drexel University to study marketing at their LeBeau College of Business. Uh, they're saying is like ambition can't wait. And I'm really excited because I feel like mine can't wait. Uh, my, my whole goal while I'm there for five years, because I'm doing a five-year plan, is to help basketball players realize that well, success is not limited to an NBA contract, right? You don't have to make it to the NBA to be a positive impact in society. And I think that goes for really any pro athlete if you want to expand that a little bit. But so many kids overseas in the United States are brought up thinking, I want to go professional in my sport. And they work and they work and they work. And then guess what? They get to 12th grade and maybe they can't play at that next level. And now they're like stuck. What are they supposed to do? So I want to help them realize that, you know what? You can still be a positive impact on society without being the next LeBron James. So did you guys catch the first head fake? It wasn't about reaching 1,000 subscribers. It was really about my plan to help the next generation of basketball players. But did you catch the second head fake? We're posting this on YouTube. Thank you.